This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So I'm heading down to Columbus to fly over to Maryland and then we're gonna be traveling down to Florida for another transport for NASA. Didn't know if I should make a video of it or not. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy the video? Let me know down in the description down below. All right, so we're here at the airport and of course, we're 600 miles away from civilization to get to our destination. Okay, here we are on pickup. So no, no trip would be complete without a Best Buy stop and I needed to get a new SD card, but that's what we're doing the night before we go to check out things. All right, so we're picking up our badge holiday so nobody's here so we finally got our badge and stuff and now we're kind of checking out all this stuff here and there and wherever else that's my guy right there and that's some of the older buildings you can see the old satellites and stuff on top of it i think this is the overhead building i kind of remember that you can see that old bird there that thing's old yep this is where we were at the last time and there's our truck driver we had the last time too now this big old building here is where we'll be going in at, doing some of our checks and stuff. It's a, it is an acoustical space. But it's just for a baffle that moves back and forth electromagnetically or what? No. <laughs> Here's that acoustical chamber we looked at the last time. This is Scott, the HVAC guy. So this is the horn driver coming back to, looks like air, are they using nitrogen. air? Nitrogen, high pressure. Nitrogen. Rate. That's probably what actually is making the noise. They had a high high frequency and a low frequency. There's a high frequency, there's a low frequency. I was going to say the low has to be up top. So the high, it went up to like 20, 20 or 30,000 kilohertz, and then the other one went really low down to like 20 or so. And when the doors are closed, you can hear it outside. You can feel so it. So there ain't a lot of noise out here? It's mainly on the inside? Oh, this is just for takeoff simulation. The, the sound of the rockets taking off. This is simulating the rocket takeoff. So you, so you guys get all that. Yes. Scott was just telling me they actually get certified to be able to check all the platforms and what else? The actual the cranes? cranes? Everything around here. Not that we can, but we had to go to class for it. So, no, so you know what you're doing and what you're yep. looking for for failures. I think we're going to see some really cool stuff that we didn't get to see the last time. It's kind of a crappy day out here, but they're just unloading one of those trucks. I went to go grab my flashlight. Now I can't get in. It's locked. Checking the three heat coils. So right now this container ship is being purged with nitrogen or uh, manufactured air. And uh, we gotta hook up our ducks and stuff, and then on Monday we'll take off. Today is Friday. That's our duck sensor. All right, so we got them all hooked up, and we're doing a test run now. We've got some bungee straps there to help keep things from bouncing around, and uh, everything's connected down there. So. Here's the same computer we had last time. We can see that our humidities and temperatures are up top right corner. Two of them are, most of them are in the bag. One or two might be out of the bag. Don't really know just yet, I kind of forgot. Just, and then here's our trending going down. So you can see that you got humidity and temperature on two different ones. And then the other computer, if we zoom out of this, it'll show you the G factor, how, many, how hard it's hit with bumps. So what all does this, this looks like smoke detection though, what it'll else? There's smoke detections that'll do particles. Um, it's actually sampling the air, you'll see it within the, the clean rooms. Mm -hmm. It'll go throughout all of the clean rooms and the mechanical rooms as well. Crap, how many stories are we going up? Ten. Ten stories. Let's go out here and see what's going on with this clean room. Now this is a plenum. This plenum. will just be the plenum. For the clean room. So this is the clean room's air handler? Yep. One of them. Holy crap. Holy crap. 
So it's the air coming in through this here. Air comes in from the opposite side. There you see the orange tubes, the vents. So they're sampling the air as it's coming up. So what are these tubes here doing above our heads? These are fresh air. So that's not even it. That's that's coming into the building. This is just coming into the building. Your return is coming down this chase. Yeah. This is this coming is from return. the clean room. Yeah, this is the return. This is that other side of this thing is those mesh yep. things. What's this funny looking PVC PVC stuff? That's all that bad stuff. Oh, they're sampling, they're sampling it. Sampling so these are sampling tubes. So they're sampling the errors are going through and they will report back. So these are the sensors for it here. Yep. So that's the differential there and drags across probably optical sensor of some sort. Yep. And this is a case of fire so it can shut it down. Yep. So the big movement of air and stuff is not these, these are purely just, now is that conditioned too? Does it have, yes. is it direct fire? That is all PX, water chill, chill water So you're, you're cooling it with the chiller in the summer. What about in the winter time? Uh, we're still doing a chiller. So boiler? No chiller. We still produce heat. You got so much heat in the building. Those fans. Huh? Yeah. The fans produce that much heat. Oh, yeah. Why? Friction of the air? Ah. Oh. We gotta see these motors. I'll show you. Holy crap, dude. We are 10 stories up. <laughs> that is crazy. So on the back side of this here is that mesh screen That's down there. Mesh screen, yes. So the other side of this is that clean room that I showed you downstairs as well. Like right here. You're doing humidity here, aren't you? Yeah. So you've got, oh my gosh. So you've got a steam trap there. So you've got a boiler producing steam. And it's just blowing it off in that little weird canister looking thing? Yeah. Now what controls that? Just a constant steady state? Uh, EAS system. So that's how you keep the humidity controlled. What kind of humidity level do you keep? Uh, about 45%. So about normal then? Yeah. And that is for ESG, for static control. So you don't damage the... Yeah, that makes sense. How many horse is this? 200 horsepower. 200. At 480. 480 volt. How much does that weigh? Say on that box, 160 kilowatt, 382 volt, 245 amps. Uh, oh man, that looks a lot heavier in 460. What's this thing here? Is that just a collector? That is oil. Oil. And then we also run uh, vibration sensors on these. Okay. So that we can check the bearings on them. See if the bearings are good, and we have a um, vibration monitor that'll attach to all of that. So these are for noise. Is the reason why we got this. Yep. So that is one big old. It's all one band. It's all one house, but they can actually be uh, pitched. To move the oh, that's there. how you speed it up, slow it down. Instead of speeding the motor up, you change the pitch. Yeah, but they're set. They're, once they're set, they're done. Oh, okay. You, you adjusted them, and then they you were done. The for 155,000 CFM. Yeah, that's not a decimal point. No, that's not a decimal point. <laughs> but we're running a 1.9 static. Yes, that is times six. Times six. We are running six fans. Times at six. 155,000 oh. CFM per fan. So we're on a hundred. 76 amps, 176, 185, we're bouncing to 190, 188. There's a lot of warmth here. That's why we have the two. Oh, they're Lieberts. Yeah, I've worked on one similar to this. Now, it's just for this, for the drives, ain't it? Now, are they 
Just blowing it out on the ground? Is that what they're doing? Nope, they're just blowing it straight out. Wait a minute. That, now, is this for the condenser? Or are they That's chilled water. That's a chill uh, glycol system from the condenser, yeah. So, so it's a water-cooled condenser? Yep. Oh. That door has to shut oh. first. Wow, my ears just changed. So are we in a positive or a negative? This is a positive. So the air is That's coming. The three filters. The air behind here comes down through those MSX fans. So those access. are all HEPA filters going all the way up floor to story to story to story. Yep, there's four, four decks up. Four stories of this. Holy crap, and then over here is our chiller coils. Got your bleed valve right up there on top. How old is this building? Or this stuff, how old's most of this stuff? 20 to 30 years old. Wow, so it's... There's an idea of one of the strainers. Yeah, not looking very healthy. And then, <laughs> not looking very good. That's a little restricted. Now, you're running glycol through it, aren't you? No. You're not allowed to. No, Afraid of contamination. It's all just straight chilled water from all the central plant. So what's that thing keeping track of? Nothing right now, but what it is supposed to be doing is it will check the water flow. Gallons per minute? Yep. The, the chart right here, it will measure the pressure differential between the two through a restrictor plate. So it's calculated. And correlation of pipe size and pressure differential between the high side and low side, it'll take it over and give you a GPM. What, uh, what temperature do you run your water? 45. So on the other side of that's what? Oh, that's f f freaky feeling. <laughs> so this is that plenum that we were looking down from. Yep. And that's water coils all the way up. Well, four stories. Four of these decks. They're pretty clean. Imagine that, right? Shouldn't be nothing in these. Wow. And then there's another perforated wall, and then you have your HEPA filters on the other side of that. So there's your... More HEPA filters. That's your, that's your post filters. That, that they are your true HEPA filters. But I can see right through it. Yes. Well, how's that HEPA when I can see through it? Do not know that one. That's beyond my technology. What's that light on the other side? Probably from... Um, why do they have so many bolts? Are these things heavy? I, I haven't taken them out. My goodness. Those things are heavy duty. Look, that's angle iron. And it goes all the way up. Same thing. So four stories of this and four no, stories? They are, they are full story oh. from top to bottom. Four or full? Full, full stories. So ten stories. Ten stories. This is the 576, I think it is, somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah, this is a little bit more than I got to see last time. See, you got to get the hook up with the HVAC guys. Well, they made it every other. That way you only fall 15, 20 foot. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about getting hot in here, that's for sure. There's that front row, that steam reducing section as well. So this is the low pressure side. Yeah. Well, they run it right up to that 15, don't they? Yes, they do. That's one of the outside air units just for pre-clean, precision clean. What's that multi stack thing? That is a low outside temperature. That's a supplemental AC for the chilled water. If we lose chilled water, it will still assist in maintaining temperature for clean rooms. That comes out to like 720 some thousand BTU of capacity on the compressors. You got UV lights or anything in these? Nope. Water filtration? Yeah. Whoa, what do we got going on here? That's where we, we were at earlier. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sweet. You can see the bottles that we're going to be purging with right there. And that first trip that we made was for this device right here. What we were transporting was like some framework that goes right down in this area right there.
You can see the big monster cranes right there that lift everything up and the weight scales for them are right there. And then uh, the acoustical rooms over there on that side. They're right on the other side of that big door to the right. Them some monster doors. Is what feeds all of this. So all this duct work here comes in and goes over to those air handlers we just seen a minute ago. Some of the sensors. Looks very similar to what I have on my thermal imager. Wow, that thing looks like it's really focused there. Look at the machining on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> hopefully. But this was a joint venture, so it may have been made in Germany, who knows. And this, That's the story behind the clean wall and what it takes to make a clean room. Well, some of the first ones started here? Yeah. And how big is it? 125 foot by 100 foot by 89 foot. Wow. Just clean room. Tiny speck of dust, there we go. That's why we have to do the purge and all the other stuff. Crazy. So here is, there's a little funky. Boy, talk about Neil. it. Everybody watching what you're doing. What's up? Hey, there's our thing we transported. That's the instrument carrier. They, um, That's what we transported, ain't it? On, yeah, on Thursday. Looks like metal. They spent, there was about 15 guys that spent a solid 12 hours mounting that up. Those um, high strength struts, they're, um, those struts that are going up to it in diagonal fashion that have like a barrel attached to it and a handle. At the bottom? Yeah. Looks like an air um, cylinder. It was quite the process to get them torqued up the proper way, and they had running torque. It was, it was a whole... Couldn't just hit it with the Milwaukee, huh? No, yeah, it was a whole operation <laughs> to get them really... So all that stuff there, is that just the components that run it? Yeah, it's all the... It's like the uh, Looks like heat sinks and stuff down there on that one part. Yeah, that is. So here's a scale model of what we just moved. So to give you some form of scale, the bottom part here with the gold panels, mm -hmm. those panels that are going across the bottom on this on, that are gold colored, yep. those are the panels that you see that are swung open there. So that's a spacecraft box. Right? Will they swing open when they're in space or is it? No, no, it's just so you can get in there and hook up wires. The whole entire thing is a spacecraft bus, so it's going to hold the propulsion system. The comm panel is going to be mounted onto it. It's all the electronics and brains of the unit. Yeah. Now this ring looking thing, What's the story with that? That's the panel for the, it's called DAC, Deployable Arp, Arp, Arpature um, Cover. It's this right here that covers up the mirror, protects it. Does that open and close? Yeah, so that's just the panel. Everything will be mounted to that. Does so, it, yeah. well, why would it have to close? For deployment. So the, oh, so it'll the, open and it stays deployment. open after that. Once it's, yeah, once it's out in space, it opens up. So yeah. if you look at that gold piece, that's what's over in the corner. Okay. If you look at that hexagon up underneath of it, all in carbon. That's the instrument that's carrier. That's the instrument carrier. There's the ring for the shield. Okay, so this thing right here is that thing down there. But yes, and you can see the model. There's of multiples, the, though, of that right. that they got to make yet. And you'll still see, none of them around here, but you'll still see sections of Is that aluminum that's thick like that, the base of it? Uh, it's two aluminum sheets, top and bottom, with a wafer in between that wafer material. Those are all the solar array panels, sunshield solar Straight array ahead. panels. So that's this whole array here. So the structure that's mounted. Where are those there, at? The Straight ahead. 
can't. Okay, that right easy. there. That's your power plant. They're the sun shields slash solar arrays. The Roman goes all the way from one side to the other, all in blue. Yeah. But it looks differently than what the James Webb does, though. It see, it's still infrared. It's just a much wider area that it can focus on, and that's it. All right, so we got the monkey strapped in there. And this is where we test the G-factor. You can see the pivot point there on top. You got the one down on bottom. You got counterweight measure over here. And monster, big old monster. And then she just spins around and around. This is the generators for the centrifuge. 13,000 volts. Alice Charmer, holy crap. You got the skewed rotor, impeller, keep it cool, your stator, slip rings, holy crap, just like regular generator slip rings. Just had new bearings put in it, new Babbitt bearings installed in it within the last six months, eight months. Mission drive motor over here. 700 volts, it's like 1200 RPM. So this controls that centrifuge thing we were just looking at that spins around and around. I didn't know Alice Charmer made electrical stuff, see? They, my dad had a tractor by him. Yeah. Oh, there we go, hot deck, cold deck, pneumatic system. We've got some old uh, buildings that's got some of that junk. Uh, the Academy was famous for all that. Well, it seems to be a government thing, because that's where it's at. Oh, wow, look at this air compressor. That big old puppy. Old school. So this is the basement level of the SES. Yeah, there's some boilers. No. No? They're vaporizers. Vaporizers. Yeah. They get rid of any moisture? There's one of your, your vacuum pumps. So this is the vacuum pump? Uh, that is one of many. So that's your vacuum line. Those look familiar, don't they? There's another one. Yeah, that's another pump. That is just for exterior, if I'm not mistaken. Bye, bold. So we can put liquid nitrogen in there. All the sensors and stuff plug into it. Wow, what do we got over here? There's the liquid nitrogen stuff. That's one of the vaporizers. So you're so saying... You bring in liquid nitrogen and then you pump out vapor nitrogen. That make a good picture for. Schedule 80. More vacuum pumps all the way around this turd. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Up and in. That one works as well. Separate clean rooms. So it's just one of the smaller ones. Yep. Got the same crane system. So the thing we're transporting was built in here. Let's get to see the perforated wall over there. That's where it's pulling it through. It's coming at it from here with the HEPA filters there. Same design. All right, so we've got here, today's Monday morning. We've got everything switched voltage-wise back. Uh, the voltage here at the uh, building is 211 and the generators run 230 so we had to switch a few things back here on the back and right now we're getting things unplugged and getting ready to go we're gonna be hooking up to the tractor here in a second and we're gonna be rolling unfortunately this panel here is kind of a pain in the butts on the side but there's our power cords going out see the ground scrap everything's got to be grounded i guess when we, we when we're going to uh, remove some of the sensors and stuff we got to wear wrist straps and stuff like that too Check out this rig, pretty fancy. So we're just out here waiting on the bus right now. 
that building, uh, you know, that uh, air makeup thing and all that that we showed earlier, that literally is the top of that building to the bottom of it, which the way I'm assumed right now, it's uh, kind of hard to tell how big it really is, put it in perspective, but. So a lot of these people are involved in the project for several years. So to them, this is their baby. And that's why everyone's got such interest in what's going on. So we're gonna do a meeting here and then bounce out. So our first stop here is Flying J. We're running over here to take a look at the unit and make sure it's okay. Now this is a different trailer than we had the last time. This trailer here can pivot at the back. It can also raise and lower. It has hydraulics in there. It has a hydraulic system on it. And it obviously can detach here on the front, but this can raise and lower here. You see the pistons. And then there's our purge. And that's just coming down and connecting those hoses right there. So just check, make sure the voltages and stuff are good, which didn't expect a whole lot wrong with that. Double check our connectors, which we've got some pretty uh, industrial type quick connects there, which are kind of nice, but these bands there, they kind of aren't the greatest. Uh, this one here actually has nice uh, valves there. We can valve them off. And there's the uh, entry in, but obviously we can't have anybody in there because that would let all kinds of contaminants in. This has been purged all out. You see the amount of pipe we got here. Like a regular silo? Yes. All right, so they think something ain't working right on the generator or something. All right, so we missed, the, they, they turned off, and so now we gotta go back and find them. So we're just watching good wholesome TV here, cheaters. The rest of the crew's back here doing their thing. We just have fun. All right, so we're at a Holiday Inn Express. Nobody's at the front counter, so we're literally walking around just trying to find somebody. But, oh, look at that, there they are finally. Wonderful. All right, guys, so I'm back to the hotel here. It's, you know, a place to take a shower and get ready. It's kind of the same thing I did the last time. And unfortunately, you know, about the only thing we have to eat is McDonald's because we're out here in the middle of nowhere. I think North Carolina, South Carolina, something like that. So basically gonna take a shower. Um, the first guy's gonna go until about 11, 30, 12 area. Then the other guy's gonna go from 12 till about 3, 3.30ish area. And then, then I'll go from 3.30 till about seven. So something like that, I forget exactly. Well, it's gonna be divided up equally and what have you. So um, that's today. We can only run so long based off of um, permits and things like that and uh, we're pretty much as far as we can go and we didn't make it to our destination that we wanted uh, so yeah it's one of the things on until tomorrow all right guys so we are up and at it it is exactly 3 18 in the morning we've got our basics here very very basic i mean sleep for a little bit and now we're going to go out and we're going to babysit a computer and for about three and a half hours, four hours, something like that. And then take off. Um, and then we should be there later today, about six and a half hours, seven hours, something like that. Uh, this is a lot shorter trip than what the other one was. That's where we stayed at. It's not a bad little hotel. We're in uh, just the tip top of South Carolina. And now we are heading over to the truck stop, which I believe is over 
think we stayed at the flying J. So yeah, we just kind of like walk out here. We couldn't get close because we got the semi plus another monster semi and generators and all that stuff. So that ends up making it so flipping loud that not a lot of talk about guys. We uh, did this on the last video. Um, it's this is a lot shorter trip like I said so that's why I kind of decided to do it again so I mean you know everybody should walk right down the middle of the freaking highway just about there I really like to get one of those four-wheeler uni rolly round thingies but I don't know how well it would do on this all right so we got the Hagen Doss body armor these guys are wide awake out here just partying watching Videos from 1980s. <laughs> and they said nothing got up and moved away. I'm holding 31%. Imagine that. It's still working. Alright, so what we did, we disconnected the transfer switch, let this cool down, shut it off, started this first, made sure that it came up and was running, stabilized, pressure built. Alternator was working, had 220 some volts. <clears throat> Plugged that in, switched it over. Inside here, we got our Jackery to keep up our uh, Wi Fi and our routers and stuff like that. All of our stuff, far as our uh, G Forces, all that stuff is all in there. I don't know if we can open this or not. Yeah. So. There's your Allen Bradley. There's all your fancy national instrument stuff. That's what's actually keeping track of all the bouncing and all that. Now, see, here's your <coughs> fancy uh, outdoor temperature sensor and humidity. But see, you're inside this box, so you're not getting a true accurate reading of what the outdoor temperature is. So you're going to radiate heat into this thing, and it's not insulated or anything. So our electronic expansion valves, this is a pretty nice one. So it's got a, a Corel controller, a Carl Corel. I, I like to call it Corel, like the freaking old Microsoft competitor. Got that there. Got a uh, base protector right there, which I just replaced all of them. And those are actually made here in Ohio, which is kind of crazy. Here's all of our spare. Now what they're doing is they're actually using manufactured air and I like really didn't understand what that was. Essentially if you think about it, if we're running nitrogen in there like we normally would do, we're going to wipe out all the oxygen which means if somebody would go in there, likely is they're going to pass out and probably die if you know somebody wasn't paying attention. So that's why they're truly using it, uh, basically manufactured meaning they've already dried it and but it has enough oxygen in it. So something new. They're also adding nitrogen into it. That way it's adding, it's the equivalent of what we're breathing out here. Only more purified and no humidity? More purified and no, no humidity inside of it as well. Sweet. So and then there's our thing there. So here's our flow meters for the purge. So I see a little ball right there. Those are dead. So we're mainly, yeah, we're just a little over the five, about five and a half. Yep. There's our main tank supply. Outlet pressure. So we're purging out, it looks like 60 PSI. And then, obviously these aren't the tanks we're running on, but that's the regulators and stuff. A lot of the things I think you can get out of this trip is, guys, is in HVAC, we're able to do so many different things. I mean, you could sit around and do Nancy, Miss Nancy's furnace all your life, and that's great if that's what you want to do. But if you want to go bigger and better and try to get into stuff that not everybody can do, I'm not saying this is super great, like un unheard of, but majority of the people, you know, as far as like the, the grocery stores, industrial stuff, you have a, a wide opening out there of job opportunities with an education that you'll get on the job or through an apprenticeship program that you aren't going to have a humongous uh, school debt bill and you're going to make as much or more than a lot of your people with your bachelor's degree. So HVAC, refrigeration, any of that, all great fields to get into. And I think that was the main thing, not only that I do this channel for, why I do it. One of the main reasons why I did this channel was to help the young guys to get the education or get some of the answers that they were looking for that I couldn't get because people just didn't want to come out and say it. And to incentivize people to consider going into the trade. So let's go back inside. 
the fancy computer back there behind me has got all the other information on it. But with this one here, we're literally able to control our uh, EPR valve, check our system pressures, discharge, return, temperature, humidity, and the return duct, uh, turn our cooling demand on, off, and set up parameters. Everything built into it because it's all coming out of that Corel controller. All right, so we're on the move now. We're finally heading down the road. Hopefully we'll be able to get there sometime, maybe around three o'clock, something like that. I guess we'll find out. Oh, we got water on both sides of us. All right, sounds good. Thank you. So we made another stop here at a rest stop, double check things. I mean, it's just one of those deals where, you know, you get a chance to stop, you check it while you can. Flow meter, because uh, of that constant purge, was acting up. And, you know, one of them deals where you uh, want to make sure that you got the flow going on. It was able to actually read a true variable of what they've got. And, you know, it's unfortunately defective, so there ain't nothing you can do out here. They didn't bring extras. You can't have triples of everything, so anyhow, back on the bus. All right, we're about ready to head into Florida, so I think we're just coming out, soon to be coming out of uh, Georgia. And uh, so we're stopping off for lunch here. Let's see if we can get us a 99 cent heart attack. All right, so we are in Florida. And uh, we'll probably hopefully be at our destination here for long. So they bring camera crews and all that there to kind of document stuff. It's kind of interesting. I mean, literally, full-blown rental crews. So these are like the people that have either been involved with it or whatever the case. So, yeah. All right, so we've got exhaust pipes here we got to put on the machines, and that way we can keep the crap from getting inside the building. You want my drill? Apparently anything coming out, the stupid thing. They're unloading stuff. They take this thing in there, and, I, and it's got a humongous ceiling so they can put it in the encapsulation so when it's shot into up into space, uh, you know, it's basically like a like a cup over top of it. This is the rat hole I got stuck at because everything's booked. The freaking days in. Disgusting rat hole. I checked my bed to see if I had any. When you look at the mattress here, it's like, there's black shit there. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, that's pretty freaking nasty. There's hairs. Yeah, this, you got stains there. You got black specks up here in the ceilings. This is so much better. Holy crap, I had to get out of there. I mean, it's got a freaking refrigerator, <sighs> microwave, bed that hopefully doesn't have nastiness all over it. So, so late, can't get no food, so we're just gonna do that. He even got a beer. Bathroom, my goodness. I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. So much different. I'm not looking for perfect. It's a, uh, that was pretty bad. So I told them, hey, I'm in HVAC. And they're like, whoa, whoa, you, we got you a room over here. Yeah. All right, so we're back the next day. It's raining like it's been raining for a while now. We just got to snip some wire ties off, put things wrapped up, and then I got to get on a 
plane and head back. What we're doing here is we're getting ready to lift the box off. As you can see, everything's super, super slow. And they got multiple people spotting it. And once again, as far as people photography, doing photography of everything, along with videographers like over here. But everything goes super, super slow, no mistakes, no bumps, jars, things like that. So a lot goes into it. You can see right there the guide rails for that box to go up. A little different than the last one we had where they had the little circular things. They're going to pull that off of there. They're going to set it over here where these people are standing at. And then they'll put the capsule on top of that little platform thing there. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and unhook these BNCs and we're going to start uh, tying everything. Alright, so we basically had to head back to the airport so we head back so we're not going to get to see them unbag it or anything like that. But that's just a touch of what goes on during a transport. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And until next time guys, thanks for watching. Later. So we are just dinking around here with the freaking fire alarm now. And they are slow. They were supposed to be ready to go at like 5.05 and take off. But nope, we're late. <laughs>